what do you make of that that recent thing that came out with the they went under the pier they found these big uh things under the pyramids these big like vertical columns under the pyramids what, what do you make of that have you looked into that at all i have interviewed those two italian guys actually. oh really yeah actually uh i think they are really smart actually the guy who made this algorithm and this entire so the the engineering part of it he's a also an electrical engineer telecommunication engineer holds several masters and a phd so he's a brilliant guy and i think something went sideways with the explanation so they probably couldn't transfer the full knowledge and everyone thinks that it's it's a, it's a bullshit so in my understanding they are using these satellites to shoot uh radio waves to the to the ground basically mm -hmm. and they are measuring uh the frequency shift in these radio signals caused by the earth's crust movements so if you are familiar with the doppler effect mm -hmm. when the when the ambulance car is moving and using the the, the siren the movement of the car is causing a pitch shift mm. in the sound. Right. So basically when the earth moves, I, I hope I can give it back properly, but when, when, the, right. when the earth's crust moves, very low level seismic activities, they can sense this, this uh, as a frequency shift. Right, okay. And then they can estimate what's on the ground. But and this is new technology that they use to find this? Or is I this think they been around. The the SAR uh, technology SAR is, scans, is yes. ex, 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 that's existing. Okay. Military is using it. So my understanding was that from whoever explained this to me was that the whatever the uh stuff they used to detect this stuff under the pyramids was new or something, some sort of novel technology. Yeah, they refined it to be able to go deeper and to be able to analyze this deeper, basically. Mm. But it depends on the model you have out of this... Uh, That's crazy. ...this bedrock. So you need to have a good approximation of the bedrock. Is If it's limestone, what's, what's the geophysical properties of that block mm. or, or that, that stone you are looking at? And a lot of people are confused, probably, uh, what are those rendered images? Like, is it yes. made by AI or something? So yeah, they, well, the, yeah, yeah. in my understanding, they try to make it more understandable. They can interpret these heat maps and images, but we we cannot. <laughs> so this image we're looking at right now, Steve, this is the that one on the right and the left. Those are like the actual, uh, that's the actual data scans that we got from this SAR stuff. And then people yeah. came in and did like artistic rend renditions of it to make it more palatable <laughs> for they, people. They did it. Yeah. Oh, they, they did it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And these people have a YouTube channel where they cover this stuff, right? They have a these, these Italian dudes. I don't think they have. I I'm not. Oh no. I'm I'm not sure. Oh, I thought they did. I thought. Um, did we have somebody who like showed us their YouTube channel, Steve? I think that was uh, Jeffrey Drum. Yeah. No, it wasn't Jeffrey Drum. It was re more recent. This is where you're talking about the, the more artsy stuff, right? Yeah, that's the more artsy stuff. And they also scan known structures. Mm. Okay. To, like the Osiris shaft uh, also. Um, and it was accurate? I mean, my question is the interpretation. Is it biased because the structure is known? Or is it full automated interpretation by, done by the model they use? So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think Kyle from the Snake Bros said once that they should scan something unknown and then excavate it and compare to be 100% sure. Well, yeah, if you can scan something where you know what's, you know, like scan a shaft or a pyramid's interior where you know you've already explored it and the data that comes back correlates with what you already know is real, then that's a good way of, of testing whether this technology works or not. And then if you do something unknown and it shows you something like this, then you should, I mean, that's a pretty good uh, proxy for if it's accurate, right? I yeah. mean, so they, I mean, and then now, I don't, I don't know what, if, they've, if, if, if anyone's proposed to try to like dig and explore this or not, but. Um, it would be really hard in my 
opinion to dig under the pyramid. It's mostly bedrock, so. And also the permits and who would allow this. Yeah. Probably a different group has to verify this to get the permit for any digging. Mm. But they also scanned two years ago the, the Great Pyramid. This is under the the Middle Pyramid. They also scanned the, the Great Pyramid. And oh, this was under the Middle Pyramid. Yeah. Okay. And they found hidden chambers. Yeah, right, right. They found one the size of a jumbo jet, like above the Grand Gallery, right? Or like a 747. <laughs> was like, that was the size of that, that cavity that they haven't explored yet. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like how, like they did that years ago and that was the scan pyramid project, I believe. Um, and they still haven't like drilled into it or no, yeah, no, right there, the hidden chamber. The yeah. Italian guys scanned the great pyramid and found those hidden guys chambers. found that chamber, that hidden no, no, chamber. No, no. That's the scan pyramid. That's the scan pyramid. The Italian guys, uh, Steve, if you look for, um, or search for Gnum Khufu, uh, synthetic aperture radar, it should, should show the. Yeah, I mean, how long ago, how long has it been since Chris Dunn found those two electro the electric probes, those two metal prongs at the end of Gate and Brink's door, right? Like there's no, there's still, they, they did it on a national TV for like a huge documentary and there's still no explanation for that. What is this? Is this it? I think that's an AI image on the left. Uh, the second image was a little bit better in the result. Yeah, that one. They have also this. Oh yeah, render. I've seen this. <clears throat> and those chambers are mostly unknown. So the green one, number Unexplored. nineteen, is the uh, the 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 big chamber cavity. Probably that they yeah. have not explored yet. And there are these ramps all around. That's mm -hmm. also unknown. And there's also, which Chris don't explains, is there's these big. I, I didn't know about that until I talked to him. Was there's these big um, like holes in the ground on the outside of the uh, Great Pyramid that he says they connect into the shafts that go up to like the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. And yeah, he, that's and the he, rumor. He hypothesized that you could that they could have poured chemicals in there and it would have fed up those shafts and like gone through like into the chambers or something like this. Probably, I have no idea. But I'm yeah. sure that a lot of those tunnels under the Giza plateau probably are connected or were connected to the mm -hmm. to one of those or all of the pyramids. If you go down to the Osiris shaft, it's like 100 meters deep, probably, mm -hmm. with three levels. The lower level is uh, filled with groundwater, mm -hmm. basically. But there are one or two shafts relatively closed. I think Zai Havas found this in the late 90s or something. They tried to excavate. They couldn't. They they faced with like mud. They, they couldn't go forward. They couldn't proceed. They Once they found a small kid in that tunnel and the kid also, I mean, he found a blocked entrance or a blocked tunnel. They don't know what's, what is it connected to. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the subterranean chamber of the Great Pyramids, I, I think that's a good, good option. So maybe the subterranean chamber is connected to the Osiris shaft or one of these shafts. Well, the subterranean chamber, I mean, it's like almost impossible to get a human down there. Like a big person can't even barely get down there, you know? Into that tunnel, with the, yeah. Yeah, that, that very bottom shaft where, where Chris Dunn thinks that there was like a, a, a hydraulic device that like hammered the ground and like, and like, yeah. and like made many earthquakes, right? And that's just a whole hypothesis of how it's like a solid state electron harvester that like, yeah. Uh, uh, build electrons through all the igneous rock through the pyramid and like somehow created uh, free electricity or something like this. It's a wild, it's a wild hypothesis. But I mean, he, I mean, he's the guy to do it. I mean, he literally came up with the whole reverse engineering diagram of how it would work and how those chemicals would interact and how it could the uh, theoretically create some sort of uh, free energy. But again, I mean, that's applying our knowledge of uh, technology to something that was, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. <laughs>